Hello, today I'll teach you two methods on how to implement melee attacks for your 3D Godot project. The first part of this tutorial is about setting up the player and enemy objects. So if you're only interested in the actual implementation of the melee attack, you can skip to this part of the video. Open Godot, create a new project, and name it whatever you like. The first thing we're gonna do is to make a new folder. This is where we will put the Blender imports. I put the link in the description so you can download my 3D models. If you like, you can use your own models, but we all know mine is better. Drag the player and enemy GLB files into Godot. Now the next step is very important, so pay attention. Click on the player GLB file and go to Import tab. Click on Preset. Now select import with separate materials and animations. Now click re-import. If you forget to do this step, you will not be able to edit the imported animations in Godot. Now do the same for the enemy GLB file. Now you can see that the animations have separate files in the file system. That means you did it correctly, congratulations. Now it's time to start setting up our player. Make a new scene and make it a kinematic body. Rename it to player. Add a spatial node to it and name it Graphics. Now you can either drag your player GLB file to this window or to this window. The problem is sometimes Godot bugs out and you can see this X mark right here. If this happens, you can only drag it to this window and then you can just reset the transforms like this. Now the player model I made is too big, just like your mom. So let's scale it down to about this size. Now right click on the new node and select editable children. And here you can see the animations I made in Blender. For this tutorial I included attack and idle animations. Let's go to the idle animation. We want this animation to play when we start the game, so let's click on the auto play button. We also want it to loop, so click this button right here. We can now save our player scene. Now let's make our main scene. Make a new scene and name it whatever you like. Now let's put our player scene as a child of the main scene. We also have to add a camera or else we won't be able to see anything. Normally we have to set up the camera so that it will follow the player. But since we're not gonna move in this tutorial, I'm just going to set up the camera so that we can clearly see what's happening. We can now try running our game. Press F5 and select the main scene as the main scene. Amazing. Now it's time to add a script to our player. First let's get access to our animation node. On ready var animation equals this path. Now let's make some functions to set our player states. First will be set state idle, which will just tell the animation node to play the player idle animation. The next one is set state attack, and it will tell the animation node to play our attack animation. Now in our process function, we're just gonna check for input UI accept, and that will call our set state attack. All right, let's test this. Amazing. We can actually pass a second value to animation.play here. This will give our animations a bit of blending, so they don't just snap into the next animation. Of course, after our attack animation, we want to go back to our idle state. So let's go to our animation player, select the attack animation, and put the timeline marker to the end of the animation. To make it easier, you can copy this animation length to the snap window, and then move the timeline marker. Now let's add a track, call method track, and select our player node. Now scroll down to that call method track, and select our set state idle function. Now whenever the attack animation finishes, we go back to our idle state. Very nice. Actually, let me change the blending to 0.1. I think that will make it smoother. Hmm, yes. Now let's start setting up our enemy. Make a new scene and make it a kinematic body. Now just like our player, we're gonna make a new spatial node name it graphics, and we're going to drag our GLB file into that node. 
Now you can see here that our creeper is facing the wrong way. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to rotate it by 180 degrees on the y-axis. We can also see that the texture is blurry. That can be fixed by going to texture material. Go to albedo, click on texture, and disable mip maps and filters. Very nice. Alright, now let's go to this node and enable editable children. Now let's go to the animation player. For the enemy, I included a hurt animation and idle animation. Just like what we did for our player, let's go to idle animation, click on autoplay, and click on loop. Now let's add a collision shape to it so it can detect when it's getting hit. I'm just gonna use a box shape here, but you can do whatever you like for your project. Okay, now it's time to add a script to our enemy. This one's gonna be very simple. Just like our player, we need access to our animation player, just like this. And then we have hurt function, which will play the hurt animation. And we have the set state idle, which will play the idle animation. Oh, looks like I forgot to rename this to enemy. Alright, now we can save it. Now let's go back to our main scene and let's add our enemy in there. Let's position it in front of our player. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the first method I know. Basically, we're just gonna add a fixed hitbox in front of our player where we want the hit detection to happen. Add a collision shape to it. I'm gonna use a sphere shape here, but you can do whatever you like. Just position it approximately where you think the sword will hit. Okay, I think this is good. Now let's go back to our player script. We're going to reference our hitbox just like this. Now we're going to make a new function, function attack. For enemies equals hitbox dot get overlapping bodies. This will give us a list of all the objects that are currently inside our hitbox area. For enemy in enemies, if enemy dot has method hurt, enemy dot hurt. So what we're doing here is we're checking each object inside our hitbox area if they have the method hurt. And if they do have the method hurt, then we're going to call that method. And then they get hurt. Alright. Now let's go to our animation player. This is where we will call the attack method. Now let's choose a specific frame to call it. Okay, I think this frame is good. So right click, insert key on our call method track and call our attack method. And now it should work. Oh, I actually forgot to set the enemy state to idle after the hurt animation, so I'm just gonna do that here. Okay, now it works. Very nice. I'm going to position the camera on top view and turn on visible collision shape so we can see what's happening. Okay, so we can see the enemies inside the hitbox area. And when the attack method gets called, it gets hurt. Alright, now for the second method. This is something I realized while I was in the toilet this morning. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and delete our hitbox. Also in our code, delete all the references to it, otherwise it might return an error. Now this method is a lot more accurate than the first method because we're going to attach our hitbox to our sword. 
let's go to our skeleton node and add a bone attachment node to it. Now for our bone name, select sword. And we can now see that it's actually attaching to the base of the sword. Nice. I'm just going to name this sword attachment. Now let's add an area node. This is going to be our new hitbox. Add a collision shape to it. I'm going to use a capsule shape. Rotate on the x-axis by 90 degrees. You know, you can do whatever you like. Just as long as it occupies around the same area as the sword. Alright, and now we can see that it actually follows the sword. Very nice. Okay, now our only problem is that it will detect collisions even when you're not attacking. To solve this, we're going to disable this collision shape right here and only enable it when we're attacking. We're going to do this in the animation player. Select the frame where you want the collision detection to begin. Uncheck disabled and add a keyframe. Now select the frame where you want the collision detection to end. Check disabled and add that keyframe. So now the collision detection for our hitbox only activates when we are in those frames. Now go to hitbox and connect our body entered signal to our player. We're going to do the same thing we did earlier. If body.has method hurt, then just call that method. Then it will get hurt. And now we can see that it works perfectly. And that concludes our lesson for today. As always, if I did something wrong here, just tell me in the comments because I'm also a Godot beginner. Now I'm just going to add some effects for the thumbnail. Alright, thanks for watching. Also, if you still haven't checked out our game Polaris and joined our Discord server, what are you doing? Links in description.